word. Uh, we're here today with, I guess this, I hopefully this is going to be our maiden voyage. Our maiden voyage last time <laughs> we got interrupted, but we yeah. got a new format now, so we're not going to do any more breaks. And I'm here with Seamus Coughlin from Freedom Tunes. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'd say last maiden voyage still counts as a maiden voyage in the Titanic sense. Oh, uh, it was a bit of a disaster, but it was still our first run. Too soon. I think we'll do a better job this time. We just won't say that the ship is unsinkable. We're actually going to try to put our minds into this. Basically, I think the issue last time was with some of the software we were using. It wasn't our fault. Yeah, and I'm st we're still kind of having wasn't software my fault. problems, but we managed to get it working, and knock on wood, it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. We so, can pull through this time, but... No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jim. No, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> I never say anything interesting. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. You really never do. I don't know why I'm doing this with you. You're literally terrible. Um, we really want to talk to our audience members uh, about the good news of social justice mm -hmm. and this very, very important progressive animated series that's being released. I mean, this is the most important thing to happen since Macklemore gave the gay people rights. <laughs> I mean, this is literally what our grandchildren will be reading about in history books as the most important thing of our generation. And I'm not even worthy to introduce or explain it. So, Jim, if you want to take it from here and explain the cartoon Gen Z to our audience so that we can enlighten them and help them check their privileges just a little bit more. Yeah, I did a live stream a few days ago, and people were, like, determined to find out whether or not what, what side I was going to join. Was I going to join the neo-reactionary MRA type thing, or, was, or am I going to join the social justice warrior? But I figured it out. I'm going to join the social justice warrior so expect me on bleeding heart libertarians i'm just joking um so we're gonna talk about you think it is a joke yeah <laughs> you think social justice is a joke woo, hey you know what woo. the j the j the j and s day job s i'm sorry the j and sjw does not stand for joke jim it stands for justice and if you think justice is comical then I don't think there's much of a conversation to be had here. Yeah, I'm, I'm triggered already. I, I'm triggered by my fake joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the show is called Gen Z, and it's basically Tumblr the cartoon. Um, <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna play we're gonna play the audio for you. Um, it, it's not it's it's not you know it's not gonna tear your ear off, but you know it, it's gonna make you cringe. And we're gonna talk about <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do like a live read off of it, I guess. So, um, yeah. yeah, so might as well just start the whole thing. So I'm just going to kind of play, like, section by section, and hopefully, uh, maybe you know, you can feel free to interrupt, and I'll stop it. But ugh. Oh, I, believe me, I will feel free to interrupt. Okay. Play. Just Let's make go. sure you say sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt when you do, okay? Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, was your single mother attractive? Mine. All right, here we go. <laughs> they met as online gamers. Shona, a stand-up comic. There's nothing like coming of age in a world where all the good Twitter names are gone because you were born too huh. late, jobs are something you only see in 80s movies, and diet <laughs> soda gives you diabetes. Cameron. Oh my goodness, that was such a knee slapper. Like, I, it took all of my <laughs> effort not to laugh. Because it's I didn't really want good. to ruin the audio experience so everyone could hear all the wonderful jokes that came out of this thing. I couldn't even hold back. I laughed really hard at all those jokes. Hey, what, what's her name again? Shona? Shona, did you know that there are children starving in Africa? There's nothing worse than coming up in an age where all the good Twitter handles are taken and you get a job to send you an email. Like, you would have a job anyway. Like, you would have a job. You probably get money from Patreon being a professional victim. Your whole entire poster behind you is just posters and pictures of trans people hung up on the wall. I think Jim and I talked about this, but isn't it weird that the trans character literally just has posters of trans people hung up on their wall? Like, that's literally the only thing about her. I'm a straight white male. Do I just have pictures of straight white males, like, hanging up all over my wall? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the stupid... <laughs> yeah, I'm a bald guy, but I just got this wonderful poster of Stefan Molyneux behind me, and it, it's so great. It kind of goes in with my Picard posters, and, you know. <laughs> it's that's so ridiculous. There's just all trans people behind her. I don't... It's like, they go 
in between, like, I feel like if I were making a parody cartoon and I had the exact same thing where a trans character had a bunch of pictures of trans people, they would call that tokenism. Like, there's oh, more yeah. of their personality than being trans, you know? <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a, everything in here is a token character. Everything in here. Even, even, well, we'll get into that. But, okay, so we're, I guess we cut this off, like, right before they said the name of the next character. And there's a lot to say about this one. His name was Cameron. And it, I, oh, geez. I, pl <laughs> I played it, uh, uh, anyways, so it, so yeah, imagine it's saying Cameron. A poet. I'm giving my answer in a free form poem. Make it a quick haiku. It's a sacrifice, but I cannot live at home. So the answer is oh, shit. That's the joke. Ha! That's the joke. That's the joke. You know what else the joke is? <laughs> um, unfortunately, our audience can't see because this is just the audio. Yeah. But this character looks like he like if someone asked me to picture Jim Crow, like this is his great great grandson. It's such a stereotypically drawn black character that it's offensive. And I'm not a race baiter or a social justice warrior, but I just see a lot of irony in that. This yeah. character looks so stereotypically black, like something you'd see in an old racist Warner Brothers cartoon. And to be frank, it's kind of annoying that yeah. they couldn't be more original than that. It's a few steps away from blackface. It really is a few steps away from yeah. blackface. And uh, maybe, and of course, he has to be a poet and a rapper, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I think. And I mean, I mean, I, that's that's fine. I don't care. But these are the same people who will attack other forms of media because oh, you're stereotyping black people as rappers and whatever. In bad, I guess yeah. bad poets too. Um, you know, and then, yeah. you know, oh, I can't believe they're depicting black people to have, you know, stereotypical black features and stuff, but they're more than okay to do I, it for themselves. Exactly. And I, I bet that like the mid season reveal is going to be that he's actually transracial and he's a white dude in blackface <laughs> and it's going to be a big check your privilege episode. Oh my he's goodness. definitely one of those, yeah. but it's, it's funny because I think a common theme throughout all of this that we're going to be getting back to with almost every gag is this kind of it's okay when we do it type thing. They make all these jokes that they would be horribly offended or the social justice community would be um, revolting against uproariously if anyone else had made them. Yeah, oh. But it's because they did it. It's okay. And it reminds me of that age-old stereotype of uh, a woman thinking it's either creepy or attractive when a guy says something based upon whether or not he's attractive. You yeah. get what I'm saying? That it kind of reminds me of that whole phenomenon. Like, certain people can get away with it for very arbitrary reasons, but it comes from the exact same place. Yeah, and I'm going to get into that when, when they actually do do something like this, because there was actually a video that I saw recently, and we'll talk about that. But anyways, bad joke. I mean, so like so far we've had like two terrible jokes, and that this is like the very – we're in 30 seconds of the video. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 you've already lost half We had half two your, terrible jokes – yeah, you've yeah, already we, lost we, your entire got, audience. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, honest, honestly, probably like eight terrible jokes if you count all the jokes Jim and I have been making about it, but two terrible jokes in the show so far. Yeah. All right, so... Huey! We'll a psychotic. I ain't gonna pop you in the dick. <gasps> oh, in the Let head. me get this out of the way up top. I hate people. Okay, so the character looks like a stereotypical dude bro you know he's got the tattoos he's got the bleach blonde hair spiky and he's, he's big and muscular kind of california looking dude he's the cis white gender or cis gender <laughs> white male uh you know in every sense of the word of course they have to make him what was it psychotic i think that's not even the right word <laughs> the psychotic no the the proper word would have been psychopath but they called him a psychotic for yeah, some that's triggering to me by the way <laughs> they self-diagnosed him as psychotic, even though he's a psychopath. Yeah, and of course he because is a psychopath Tumblr. because he's the white cisgendered male, right? So they can do that. Yeah, exactly. But what's interesting is like this is like the only interesting character of the whole entire show. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is yeah. just like, oh, it's it's almost just a token character. Mm -hmm. And they're they're all like the virtuous characters that embody all the positive qualities, and their only negative qualities are quirks, which the audience is supposed to enjoy and relate to. And that's a huge problem with this kind of affirmative action writing, as I call it, where they want to include all these different characters of different races. That'd be completely fine with me 
but they make the characters so bland because they're so terrified of offending whichever minority group they're representing. And so ironically enough, the white straight characters end up being the most interesting characters because those are the characters they're willing to poke fun at and who they aren't afraid to make look bad, etc., etc. So they really do minorities more of a disservice by portraying them this way than anything else because they're just bland, unrelatable characters. Mm -hmm. And this one is probably the worst. Uh, we, I guess she's going to introduce herself. And Betsy, fashion victim. These are my Iggy Azaleas, and these are my Azalea Banks. Let's not confuse them, okay? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's oh so that funny. was funny, Jim. I know, she is that what? She names uh, them after pop culture icons, right? And it kind of sounds like an azalea plant. I guess that's the right word for it. The, I don't know. What, I'm not. A, I'm not interested in all that stuff. But okay, dude. You know what? I just uploaded uh, a new cartoon today that I thought was really bland and unfunny because it mostly is. But I feel way better about it after watching this. Mm -hmm. It's like it's it's not this bad. Yeah. This this is this is by an award winning animator <laughs> yeah this is by an award-winning comedian right here yeah I mean, just wait the only thing is is that she's an asian female and she's a fashion victim later they'll talk about how she's she's got a secret and the uh, other thing is is that she's on like some kind of like pension or whatever like she gets money from her family or something i'm not sure what's going on here at all um but apparently she's got a secret we're gonna learn about it we have to watch the show uh Oh no, you ends. mean I can't find out now? They don't want to be Gen Y, so they're moving in together and calling themselves Gen Z. You've shown us more crappy apartments than Bill Cosby drug dates! Oh, so edgy. What? Yeah, that- hold on. A Bill Cosby date rape joke is acceptable when a social justice warrior makes it. I'm just clearing that up for everybody else, mm -hmm. so you understand. There's a certain class of people who are allowed to make jokes about a horrible travesty that occurred to about 20 women. 20 women were raped by a trusted celebrity who represented manhood to so many young boys and influenced countless. But it's just a big, hilarious joke <laughs> when social justice warriors are the ones making it it's yeah. ju and, just hysterical and and there was actually a video by Lacey Green that came out uh, I guess a couple a week ago or something where she was talking about how it's totally unacceptable to make jokes about rape and one of the jokes that uh, she used in her video was uh, there was a Daniel Tosh and I'm not a fan of Daniel Tosh at all uh, but he made a Who joke is? yeah he made a joke that um, you know like like someone or his sister or whatever used silly string or someone replaced uh, his sister's silly string in the, for her pepper spray and she got raped and that was the joke uh, and she was so offended by you know how could you make jokes about rape and comedians need to be more socially aware but yeah this is perfectly okay to make fun of people who actually were raped not a, a fictional scenario where you know his sister was actually not raped but you know making a joke that she was raped that's bad yeah. but actual rape and you know what is okay to make fun and of uh yeah, Pick and it, what really makes me, well, what really annoys me about it too is, again, obviously I'm not exactly a social justice warrior. I'm not the kind of person who goes around trying to police comedy. But if there is one topic that actually really bothers me when it's joked about, it's definitely rape, just because I know uh, so many people who were victims of sexual assault. But at least if it's like, somewhat clever maybe i'll chuckle in spite of myself and i'll feel bad afterwards but it's like okay he got me he caught me off guard this joke was just so poor and formula based as well it's not even just that it was about rape it's that it was so bad you can tell the writer was saying all right so what's something relevant and that's happening right now what can i com compare it to like it, it seems like a it seems like a mathematical equation more than a joke really yeah like, Bill Cosby is hot right now. Bill Cosby's date rape is hot right now. Um, Let's mention it how while can it's still I have relevant. Yeah. Yeah. What's something occurring in the show that's numerous? Let's compare it to Bill Cosby's uh, rape, um, Bill Cosby's sexual assault, which was also numerous. Like, it's just, it's very lazy writing. And, and to top it off, it's the cisgendered male that's making this joke, right? Of course, like, we're always joking about rape because rape culture. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and you know what? 
You know what else I think too, now that you pointed that out, I didn't even catch that to be honest, that it is the white male character, but I feel like he's going to be a mouthpiece for all the jokes that they don't want to be seen making, but that mm -hmm. they want to make that kind of have your cake, eat it too thing. Uh, you can tell a lot of shows do it. Trey Parker and Matt Stone have ad admitted that that's what they do with Cartman on South Park. Like sometimes they'll have him voice opinions that they believe, but would be too terrified to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> though, though, what I should say, those men are rarely terrified to say anything. Yeah. But the point I'm getting at is when you create a really crappy character who's supposed to be a bad guy, you can have him say any terrible thing you want because he's the bad guy. And, oh, I'm not actually condoning it. I'm telling this joke with a sense of detached irony because it's the bad guy who's stating <laughs> this, etc. Yeah. Et cetera. Uh, fucking A. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. anyways, we'll keep going. <laughs> And it's the first animated show in the history of the world to feature a transgender actress in a lead role. Whoa. Oh my goodness. I don't think what? that's actually true. It, I don't think it's actually true, it's though. It's actually not true. Yeah. Is she, I, like, first of all, A, I mentioned this to you before, but they're saying that this is the first transgendered voice actress uh, on an animated show, but what about Seth MacFarlane? I mean, are we really sure? <laughs> uh, about Seth MacFarlane, but this also bothers me because, like you said, we're not sure if it's true or not. And also, is that woman even actually a trans woman, or are they cis? I kind of thought it was a cis woman. I don't know why. Yeah, you just you just can't judge people just by the way they look. I mean, that's that's really offensive. Really, you're offensive. right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I should. I need to. Ch I should have checked my privilege before doing this. <laughs> but they should also check their privilege before they just automatically assume that she was a trans woman just by the way she looked and sounded. Right. That's a very good point. Unless That's you, a very good point. Because yeah. <laughs> I think. Hold on. Let me. Let me look this up. What's the voice actress's name? Uh, I. I don't know. I can't look. It up. <laughs> I can't look. All it right. Up. I'm looking at Gen Z yeah. voice actress trans. This is all I need to look up. Believe it or not, they Z actually the have this website. <laughs> we should probably plug it, I guess. I guess it's genz.com. I don't know. <laughs> oh, want to see something lovely? Uh, I just found an article. The first result that came up was an article uh, by Mary Sue, which is a very highly credible scientific journal which speaks on misogyny uh, mm -hmm. and social justice. And they just published an article called Gen Z, the first animated series with a trans uh, in a lead role releases a trailer and then their follow-up article is gen Z with the first trans lead is victim to cowardly online bullying oh yeah we, uh, i'm gonna get into that in just a little bit because there's a, there's an interesting okay. he history behind this whole thing but i think we should like talk about the sh actual show or the actual promo uh, promo that they're releasing no now, you're right you're right that's what we're here for yeah. in the cartoon now in in the in the scene right now she's posting up a poster of that said i think it says never for, or never forget and it has mm -hmm. a picture of a, a trans woman on there I mean, this is like the it's, it's it's really just like oh you know here's a black guy and you know that he's a black guy because he has posters on his wall of other black guys. Oh, black people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but anyways, so she's like, oh whoa. You're trans. You didn't know. Being trans whoa, shows dude. huge strength of mind. No pun intended, but it takes balls. Oh ho ho ho. <laughs> ha. That's real funny right there. If you, you, uh, Genitals. If you thought that was funny, wait till what she says next. I'm thinking of replacing my balls with candy and turning the whole thing into a Pez dispenser. Oh, because penis and ah. Pez dispensers. Uh, that's wait. uncommon. Exactly. That's not something a sane person would normally do. Oh, I get it. Oh, it's, so funny. it's funny because... It, because normally people with male anatomy cherish it and don't want to mutilate it, but this character clearly doesn't care and wants to replace it with a Pez dispenser. Ha <laughs> ha. There was. There That's was, very funny. Yeah, there's a show. I think it was called Normal Ohio. It's kind of the same thing. It's just like the whole joke of the show is that he's a gay guy. That's the joke. <laughs> and it seems like that's kind of the whole thing here. It's like, oh, let's just talk about penises and because she's a trans woman and she's got posters on a wall because she's a trans woman of other trans people okay <laughs> co-starring jane weedland that's beast wait wait who <laughs> i actually have no clue who that is yeah, but i'm I have... also not a social justice warrior so i don't think yeah you know. but anyways i guess she has a crush on the cameron character i guess she's trying to flirt with them 
and written and directed by Hayden Bl- How did you but, catch that? But it's, it's really hard to catch. And the only reason why I caught it is because the website said so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Giving away all their secrets. Oh, wait. This is perfect because if the website is giving away secrets, now we can know what that Asian character secret is before waiting, oh. before having to watch the show. Let me find out. All right. Mm-hmm. Ten bucks is either she had an abortion, she's trans, or she's trans and has had an abortion. Those are the three <laughs> options I guarantee it's one of the three <laughs> or she's transracial <laughs> uh, what if all the characters are actually transracial <laughs> all the characters are transracial that's the twist that that's the m night Shyamalan twist ending they're all transracial <laughs> dun, dun, dun. but wait what you but then what about the white cells? we just told you so now it's a, it's so now you know it's not a problem and an actual thing <laughs> I'm pretty spooked right now honestly all right, so this is from Dude. the creators of what is it? Good Morning. Mort- good Night Burbank, the first half hour comedy to go from the web to TV. Alan, some people call this an intervention. I'd like to call it an intertransitional homosexual turnaround fiesta. Uh, you know why it's funny? You know uh, no, why I funny? don't. I have absolutely no idea what that whole scene was about. No idea. Want me to explain it? <laughs> Please well, do. Well, obviously, you're a plebeian who doesn't understand well-written comedy because this is the most intelligently devised and written series that's ever existed. Let me explain why this joke is funny. Because the clergyman has an Irish accent. Oh. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. And, and he doesn't like gay people. Oh, is that what that what? is? Yeah, I wasn't he, sure if like it a, was like if it was like you know like oh we're trying to intervene because you're gay or if it was like we're, we're happy that you're gay and her response no. is basically kind of like tearing up in the eye which could mean like anything like she's positively reacting to it or negative like I had no idea what that was until you just said that I had no idea what that I was think, about Well the reason I know is because my parents also had a trans turnaround fest for me with a Catholic priest so that's how I know. That's the only reason I know is because I lived through that but you know what it worked. I'm completely content being cis now so thank god that my parents brought the right people in at the right time. But yeah I I feel like that's going to be the emotional episode. That's going to be like the heart wrenching episode where you feel really really bad for her. And you're like now I get why you have the posters. Now I get it. I think the twist ending is that the girl, the other girl, is now at that party because they're both <laughs> going to be <laughs> going to be intervened oh. on. That's the twist ending. Oh, dun, dun, dun. that's the tw- ooh. And then the walls twist over like Plot Inception, twist. right? Yeah. <laughs> Plot right. twist: the priest is also trans. Every character <laughs> on the show is trans. He's trans Irish. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really a Irish. A train wreck, a troublemaker, a trans girl, and a trustafarian. Yeah, so that that's that's the other part. Oh, she's a Trustafarian, which and she's holding up a Is picture cool of a credit to say? card. Uh, that seems it seems kind of um, kind of bigoted to people who are Rastafarian, doesn't it? Yeah, that's kind of that's some check your privilege stuff right there. And, and I'm a Pastafarian. Of those... And I'm a Pastafarian, and I find this offensive. I'm so that? sorry. <laughs> well, you know what I think, dude. I think that this is one of those really brave shows that goes after religion. I, I can already tell by that joke they had with that priest and other mentioning Pastafarianism. I think this is one of those really no, brave no. shows that makes fun of every religion besides Islam. No, no, Pastafarian. I, I said Pastafarian. They said Trustafarian. No, yeah, you're Pastafarian. Yes. Yeah, they said Trustafarian, but triggered. they're making fun of Rastafarian. I'm very triggered. You should by be the way. triggered. And you thought the breakfast Bring this club up. was edgy. Gen Z. <laughs> This is edgy? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is edgy? This is edgy? Yeah. First of all, hold on a moment. I don't like that she compared it to The Breakfast Club because The Breakfast Club is about a group of kids who have been labeled and put in a box by society but who come together and say we're the same. This is about regular people in everyday life who so desperately want to be special snowflakes that they give themselves their own labels and separate themselves from the rest of society. It's the anti-Breakfast Club. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> A comedy about growing up and wondering why you bothered. We're still having a party? Okay, let me just take another Oxy to calm my nerves. I don't want to get all Lana Del Cray before we hit the Depeche Road. The pu- oh my goodness, multiple pop references. You have Lana Del Rey and Depeche Mode. Oh, oh my goodness. That was, about La- that was about Lana Del Rey? I like Lana oh, Del Rey. Uh, oh, that's... That, okay, I get it now. That's why it's a funny joke. Yeah, because I knew they were only putting culture. their best stuff in. Yeah, Lana Del Rey. And what's what's wow, interesting, was... like, and you can't see this because this is audio, clearly. But um, 
they have like this problem with the border. So like the top, there's like a there's like a black and <laughs> border that goes on the top and bottom to make it seem like it's even more widescreen. I guess it's uh, like film yeah. widescreen. It's screen. like a widescreen thing. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's even more widescreen than regular sixteen by nine. I don't know, <laughs> but um, yeah, sixteen by nine. Yeah, and then so like sixteen but, by nine. Like every the backgrounds and everything kind of cut off after that point, except for the characters, which bleed over into the widescreen or the letterboxing. Uh, and I have yeah. no idea why. Is it, I is no it supposed to be either. like that? Like, are they supposed to be like? Oh, no. Is it some kind of symbolic thing, or is it just bad animation? I, it's <laughs> probably just bad animation. I mean, it's hard to. But then again, it really is hard to see how you could mess something like that without intentionally doing so. But also, I don't know why you would intentionally do so, so I am torn. That's such an easy fix, too, because all you need to do is go into whatever editing software you're using and export the video <laughs> to have a certain height and width ratio so that the part that's supposed to be black is actually cropped out instead of you putting two black bars on the wrong layer. Yeah, or just move it over to the other layer. <laughs> that seems like uh, an easy fix, too. Oh. Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, is it, is this is, I think it's still yeah, it's still got, still got like what, thirteen seconds Archie, left. Start soon. Huey, we're home. All right, so you have yet another pop culture reference. I don't know if you got that. Did you catch that? It's really, uh, it's really um, subtle. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's Star Wars. It's of course he's trying. To oh, okay. so this whole thing was created to make 4chan mad. That's the whole thing it was created <laughs> to do was to make 4chan mad. And what happened was and they, debate them. They, yeah, they went to the most like social justicey warriory type website and promoted it. And then so they had some sort of backing, like some sort of like this is really a thing. And then they went to 4chan and posted on 4chan. Of course, 4chan got mad. Uh, <laughs> and 4chan started, you know, like, do what 4chan does. And they just, you know, t talk crap. And then, uh, of course, that generated some publicity so that the, the, mag the, the original article, which you, which you pointed out earlier, w wrote another article talking about, oh, there's a poor, they're being poor victims of these evil MRA 4chaners. Like, how dare they? And so now mm -hmm. they have some free publicity. But it's not seeming to work because I'm looking at their YouTube channel and they have 666 subscribers. <laughs> I knew it. I knew Satan was behind this. Oh, he, I didn't even notice that. Six, six. Oh, my goodness. Why didn't I notice that? <laughs> you should have noticed it. It's. But I have more I subscribers than this. And this has, like, press coverage. <laughs> yeah. And 4chan attention. Yeah. And I have more subscribers than that. And I'm, like, nobody on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'm nobody on YouTube either, but it's pretty ridiculous, like you said, because it just goes to show that as long as you make something that parrots the proper opinions and you get some of the wrong people mad at you, or I should say the right people mad at mm -hmm. you, uh, there is literally nowhere you can't go with it because you have the whole mainstream media on your side and it really shows how oligarchical the whole process is. There's a group of people who have opinions and they dictate to everybody else what's socially acceptable to say and think and believe and you just need to parrot the opinions of the people at the top of the the uh, media elite and if you make them happy, even if your product is pure garbage, <laughs> they're going to tell people about it. Yeah. It, it's it's negative viral marketing. It's, it's, it's uh -huh. it usually works, but it's not working so much for this. I mean, the view count's pretty, you know, not that much. It's like uh, what is it, one hundred and sixty six thousand views, which is nothing. Yeah, uh, the subscriber yeah, counts virtually really. nothing. Uh, the only people that are covering is almost like it's almost like payola type coverage uh, from what is it, Mary Sue? What is it called? Is that what it's called? The the, the website? yeah, Mary yeah. Sue. And they're they're basically me, a social justice warrior type place that would love to eat this kind of stuff up, and they are eating it up. Well, I wonder if this show has a Patreon page yet. <laughs> and you know what else? Uh, no, the no animation. Patreon. I pointed this out. I pointed this out in our test run, but the animation in this is really bad. But what bothers me 
is that the background art is really beautiful. I really like the background art in the video, but the animation is just so bad. Yeah, I didn't it's know so this bad. about you, but I guess apparently you're an animator, so you have probably have some animation-y yeah. things to talk about, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I am an animator. I do have some animation-y things. And you know what? I think I'm particularly qualified to talk about this because I'm used to working with low and no-budget projects. Uh, that's basically what I do all the time, both for a living and as a hobby. So I have no social life. I dedicate all of my time to doing this, and I'm going to tell these people exactly why they're doing it poorly. So they're doing it wrong. When it comes, <laughs> we're doing, they are doing it wrong. And when it comes to low-budget animation, there's one thing that you do not have an excuse for getting wrong. Even if you're low-budget, the one thing you never get an excuse on is lip-syncing. Lip-syncing always has to work. Always. It can be very limited lip syncing. It can be anime-style anime lip syncing where the mouth is just opening and closing, but it has to look like it matches with the audio, and it doesn't in this. And the eyes are basically dead on most of these characters. Uh, the bodies are broken up into segments, and it's sort of a vector-based uh, type thing, which can be pulled off very well in low-budget animation as well, but they do it very poorly. It doesn't look like this was done inexpensively. It looks like it was done by an amateur, to be frank. Mm. And I don't say that to be cruel or mean. I say that because there's plenty of low budget stuff out there, which comes out looking so much nicer than this. You can really tell what has heart put into it and what's just kind of thrown together. And this really does feel like it's thrown together. They said, all right, our jokes are vaguely entertaining. They probably thought they were hilarious when they wrote them. Uh, so we don't really need to put the work into the animation. And they, they didn't. I mean. I hate to say it, but it's like they put enough effort into it for this to be a project that they spent a really long time on um, because animation is always time consuming, but they didn't put enough work into it for it to be good. Yeah. They didn't put enough work in it for the, for the animation to work. So it's like, it's like at the worst possible point you can be because it's not like you've just completely admitted you don't care and thrown crap together very quickly and uploaded that. At least that's kind of funny when people do it and you're not breaking your back over it, but it seems to me like they 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 bought low or I'm sorry they bought high and they sold low they put the work in but they didn't put the work in in the proper ways uh, and they skipped over some of the more important parts and cut corners in all the wrong places and so it looks like garbage I mean, yeah it really and if does. you really wanted to save effort and time I mean like Dr. Katz is a good example of like yes bad quality animation that still works <laughs> this does yeah. not work yeah exactly <laughs> Exactly, and that's one of that's one of those things that was great about Squiggle Vision back in the day, is that a lot of like really low budget animators were using it, and I think Flash obviously is low budget. Uh, it's basically like the staple of low budget animation as of now, uh, but I shouldn't say completely because you know it's it's used by some reputable studios. Uh, and that being said, yeah, I primarily use Flash as well. Um, and I, again, my, my my the stuff I do on YouTube is extremely low budget to no budget. Um, but there's certain corners you just can't cut. I yeah. mean, look, I'm, I'm completely willing, and if you want to observe my videos, I'll give you all a little secret. Um, I will sometimes recycle certain poses made by the body just so that I can spend the proper amount of time making the lips match the audio. It's so much more important to make the lip syncing work and to make the eyes work than to focus on body movement. Like, body movement's important, but I just feel like the head and the face are more important. And it seems to me as if they did the exact opposite. They spent more time on the bodies than they really did um, on the faces. And the bodies kind of had these really stiff robotic movements. So they kind of cut corners so well. in all the wrong like, places. How dare you talk bad about her dancing? I mean, she, she's, she's a trans woman. Like, how dare you insult yeah. her and critique her? Well, it's like, yeah, you know, here's the thing. So this this bit at the end where they're all dancing actually kind of like, all right, I'll tell you what works. Her dancing actually kind of works, I think. There but none of the go. other characters' movements work. I'm going to call off the social I'm justice watching. warriors to <laughs> sick on you because you said something like, good. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I will. Well, no, because here's, here's the thing, and I have this in front of me, so forgive me if it's difficult for me to describe it to the listeners, but she has this dance where you can tell that it was actually kind of done frame by frame and her arms move into like different positions, but all the other characters have this very vector-based uh, movement, which for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, animation, speak that American. means when instead of... Yeah, I'll speak American for y'all. Um, in frame by frame animation, what you do is you redraw the character, or at least a certain part of the character, 
uh, in the different positions and then animate everything in between. Uh, when it's vector based, you design your character so that it's broken up into different shapes and you move the shapes around instead of redrawing. Mm -hmm. And so you can tell at the very, in the very last bit at the end there, um, she's done frame by frame and it actually kind of is pleasant to look at, uh, but that's probably just because I want to watch a trans woman dance mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. No, it's, it's actually, Holla. no, the animation, but the animation on that move is actually pretty decent, but the other characters, you can tell like their arms are just like rotating around and and on the Asian character, she's just pulling her arms in and out, and you can tell that that's just vectors being moved around and tweened. Uh, same with the black character, he's just moving his arms and that's just being tweened. And the, the Huey, the, the white man, is just kind of like doing this fee fi fo fum kind of thing where he's swinging his arms back that's and forth. That's racist. That's um, so racist. Um, Come on. So I, he, he's... He is pretty racist. <laughs> but yeah, no. Click it, click and watch it. You'll you'll actually totally see. Uh, no, I'm surprised I didn't catch it the first it. time, but it. <laughs> yeah, you, you probably shouldn't. I'm and, recording I really, this. I'm not going to play it again. But we've already <laughs> we've already tortured our audience enough with that. Okay, we don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just this 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 doesn't just offend me as a traditionalist it offends me as an animator i mean yeah. just, what they should have done is they should have outsourced it to korea and then have them do it seriously. You know, with under the slave <laughs> outsourcing always works every <laughs> great with everything i think i think you were talking about that's this what earlier. i did yeah in your video that yeah you that's just, that's why i have a sweatshop yeah yeah, the, the people people don't know, but the reason I'm able to produce my low budget animation so cheaply isn't because I know where to cut corners. It's actually because um, I outsource to sweatshops. <laughs> and by the way, I hope I don't sound like I'm too up my own ass here. Like, look, I'm not Disney. Believe me, I understand that. I could definitely use some improvement with some of my work, but I try to put something out there that looks nice for the audience. I don't just want to throw anything out there. And it feels to me like these people don't seem to have much of an issue with that. Yeah, it, and on this website, it's just it's so weird looking. It's like. It comes up and it's got like three little buttons. It's got what's Gen Z and it has got oh, it's this is this is what it is. And here's the cast and crew. If you want to learn more about the cast and crews, and they have one that's just LGB resources. So you think you might be trans? Hooray! First of all, if you're not alone, you you're think never you alone. Might. Does it really say that? Yeah, so it says, you so think you, think you might be trans? Yes. But why would you ever be that confused about your, your gender? Like, I thought you just know. I thought it's just like being cis where you just know what your gender is. So you think you might be trans. Being trans for dummies. Yeah, but like, why does it just say trans? It says LGBT resources. So you think you might be trans. Why not? So you think you might be trans, gay, lesbian, bi? Click to find out. Um, did they seriously I, just say there's only four genders? This is, this is clearly triggering. Some MRAs doing this. I guarantee you some MRAs behind this whole thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's an evil How could it not pickup be artist, MGTOW, MRA, Manosphere, David J. M. M. J. Arini. I, I bet he's behind this all. <laughs> Elliot Rogers is behind this. Yeah, Elliot I mean, Rogers. This is just... This is... All right, first of all, actually, I want to point this out. This has been pointed out many times before, and I recognize that this is a tangent, but... Though, again, I'm not necessarily defending the MRA community because I am not an MRA. Mm -hmm. Elliot Rogers was not an MRA either. So stop saying that he was because he wasn't. Yeah, he was actually he was temporarily all. in the, the pickup artist community, which is like totally separate. It's part of the manosphere, but it's, it's totally different. And a lot of the manosphere actually don't like pickup artists. Um, yeah. Yeah. But either way, because I'm not an MRA. Whole... I'm not a. I, people s told me that I'm MGTOW when I tell them like how I basically have relationships. They're like, "Oh, that's basically MGTOW." I'm like, okay, well, I'm not like subscribing to some, any kind of ideology behind it or anything. It's just that's the way I am, mm -hmm. and uh, so I don't I don't identify as MGTOW. I'm tr I'm trans MGTOW, uh, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't identify as MRA. I definitely don't uh, you know MRA or pickup artist or anything like that. That's no, no, no. Uh, I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not a feminist as well. But you know, like, and I'm not trying to appeal yeah. to some middle ground. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should outsource my identification. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Honestly, I I hate the middle ground. For anyone who thinks I'm trying to appeal to the middle ground, oh yeah. Fuck you, middle ground. Fuck you, middle ground. I hate you more than anyone out there. Yeah, middle ground are, is the worst. Centrists and bipartisan things. It's always like the worst possible option. Always. Yeah. Always, always. Always, 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 always. So what about Trump? Anyway, shall we, we continue? Was about the end of the video? No, this was the oh, end of it, yeah. yeah. You wanted to talk about Trump, Trump? too. You love Trump. All right. 
I love Donald Trump so much. All right, so I want to begin with this. First of all, I am so grateful that my generation has been blessed with another Bush and another Clinton. And I didn't think that things could get any better. And then Donald Trump came on the scene. And I have so much more faith in the American system now that this has occurred. I mean, can you think of a better candidate for running our nation? Can you think of a better person for the GOP to nominate than somebody who's donated money to the Democratic Party extensively, who's donated millions to Hillary's foundation, who was for third trimester abortions, which is the GOP's like least favorite thing, um, <laughs> who said several times that he identifies as a Democrat? It's not like he's, he's, a, he's a trans He's not just Democrat. a more professional version. <laughs> he's a trans Democrat. They're trying to be progressive <laughs> by electing him. There's just clearly no one better for the nomination. And look, I mentioned this uh, in a really unfunny video that I just uploaded today, but the Republican Party has two medical doctors, and I'm not endorsing either of them, but they have two medical doctors running for the nomination. But Donald Trump is beating both of them. Yeah. Donald Trump is seen as more qualified than a neurosurgeon and an optologist because he was a trust fund baby. And look, being a neurosurgeon or an optologist doesn't qualify you to run the country. I'm not saying it does, but I think it makes you a little more trustworthy when it comes to decision making and discipline than a trust fund baby who goes out there and says whatever the hell he wants without any restraint because he's been surrounded by yes men for so long that he doesn't know when certain things are supposed to stay inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But hey, but at least China will take his calls. China will take his calls. At least... Take channel take his calls, and it's funny because in the video that I made, I I kind of intentionally misrepresented his position on outsourcing because he does talk about how China has our debt and our jobs and why outsourcing has been a big problem. But I make this joke about how he's just going to literally outsource everything when he gets to the Oval Office because part of my hope is that one of his fans is going to comment, be like, "Wait a." misrepresent trump i'm gonna be like oh really saying that he's gonna outsource the white house was a misrepresentation like i thought he was actually gonna do that and so i'm i'm really a bad I mean, person yeah, he says he wants to, wants to make fellation yeah he wants to run it like a business no. and then if you look how he runs his business he does outsource almost everything he can i mean he even even hires illegal immigrants but he goes on about how illegal immigrants are ruining this country because they're taking all our gerbs and oh taking our job <laughs> taking our gerbs he's like for years for years, we've been paying illegal immigrants beneath minimum wage. This is wrong. We should be paying regular citizens beneath minimum wage for terrible jobs. Don't yeah. let illegal immigrants take them. No one wants those jobs. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's weird because, yeah, exactly. People forget that the, like, dude, an illegal immigrant is not coming after your job in an office building where you're making a decent salary. Like, these people are going after pretty crappy positions. And, again, look, I this might sound heartless, but... That's kind of how it's supposed to be with first generation immigrants and how it's always been. And I, I like I feel like on one hand, Republicans are always complaining about them taking these jobs. And it's ironic because Democrats also complain about them taking these jobs, too, because they claim that they should be making more and that the moment someone enters the U.S., they should be in the middle class. But that's never been the point of coming to America. The point of coming to America is so that your children and grandchildren can have a better life. Exactly. But you can't expect to just that, you know, they expect them to be able to just walk into this country and get a 40k a year salary and though i wish that could happen for everybody this just doesn't seem economically possible at this point so they're gonna have to work their way up taking the jobs that regular citizens aren't willing to take because that's just how the laws of supply and demand work and you can't really change that any more than you can change the laws of physics yeah and if you weren't but see the thing is like being poor isn't that bad if you know how to be poor i mean like i've been poor and i know what it's like to be poor and i know how to be poor if you know how to be poor it's really not so bad and the people who know how to be poor even better than i do are people who actually live in impoverished countries like mexico so that when they come That's here and, th and they make you know less than a minimum wage they still know how to live on that they still know how to make you know cook beans and rice from scratch you know that costs pennies to eat uh they know how to do this stuff and, and be healthy so that they can raise their kids and then their kids can go on and do better things and they can also get more job opportunities and more experience to actually get better jobs and then later on get their citizenship and whatever but i don't know who, who cares what these guys say they're just a bunch of conservatives oh, exactly. <laughs> conservatives and you know yeah. what dude it's like 
I, I get it, man. Like I'm I'm at college. I'm paying fifty thousand a year to live like I'm poor right now. Yeah. So it's like a it's a similar gig. But in all seriousness, it's funny because people don't want you to discuss. And like, don't get me wrong. I've always been very fortunate. I came from a middle class family, which is really a blessing, um, considering that it was a middle class family in the richest country in the world. But it's like you're not allowed to talk about poverty unless you've been poor, or unless you've been poor, which is bizarre. Uh, because you wouldn't only allow a doctor to talk about cancer if he had had it himself. Like, yeah. you can view the economic reality of what needs to be done to lift these people out of this condition without having experienced it yourself. Exactly. I mean, that, that's the thing. That was the exact same point that Milton Freeman brought up. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Just you I'm just totally. Would, I'm not going to accept the doctor unless he's had cancer before, because he doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and right. You're basically, you're, it's, 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 a, it's not even a rational argument at all. You're just basically saying like, person X never experienced my plight, therefore they're wrong about everything. No, no, yeah. no, no. But if I did the yeah, same exactly. thing with like Bernie Sanders, like you don't know what it's like to be rich, everyone would just laugh at me. But that's the exact. <laughs> but that's exactly what he's doing. No, it's very true. He has no clue what it's like to run a business. No, no clue. No clue. All he knows how to do is take from others and promise it to people who are willing to vote for him. I don't think he's, he's a mobster. I think someone has actually said he's never had a job. <laughs> I don't think that's actually. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. But it. But it seems like he's been in it's public service true. for most of his life, and so he's never really had yeah. any kind of a real job, real private well, sector and, job. But and, he wants to control how they how they run. Well, it's weird that we call it public service. It's weird that we call it public service because they're not servants to us. I mean, they're there to get power and control. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been, it's sad because I remember so many people in my generation were very excited about Ron Paul and I became very optimistic and I believed maybe because there was such a high deficit that people my age and my peers were beginning to see that we should no longer vote for politicians simply because they promise us free stuff and we need to hear the harder truths. But then Bernie Sanders comes on the scene and so many of the people who were supporting Ron Paul, uh, at least in my generation, move over to the Bernie Sanders camp. And it's like, wow, wow, okay, my optimism was completely misplaced. <laughs> You're still willing to vote for whoever tells you the nicest sounding thing, yep. even if it's not going to work in reality. Yeah, it's it's the so it's, it's, they're just like oh this is supposed to be the 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 democratic version of Ron Paul. I think there was like uh, Gravel was kind of like the same thing after the the primaries were over and then they were looking towards like the Libertarian Party. <laughs> there was Mike Gravel joined the Libertarian Party to try to co op that thing while Barr and Al Wayne Allen Root were trying to take it over. And that didn't work either. But people were trying to buy onto it. Like, oh, Mike Ravel is like this great, you know, like, guy, he's for the people. Like, no, he's a populist. And not only that, but, like, there was some thing about him showing up at, like, some, uh, what is it, a, a, a Holocaust denier <laughs> event. <laughs> and, what? Yeah. That was, oh, my God. He I says, like, oh, I'm not a Holocaust yeah, I denier. I didn't, I didn't know that at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was for. You sure? I didn't know you guys. Mm-hmm. It, 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 but anyways, yeah, Holocaust, Holocaust denial. What a subject. But <laughs> I think that Gen Z is going to be a phenomenal show. What other time? Yeah, we were talking about Trump. I don't know. I mean, it's funny because I didn't know that he was even a legitimate candidate until there was, I think a couple months ago I was speaking with uh, somebody from the Tea Party. I was doing a little bit of networking, and I, I was curious to see who their preferred candidate was. And they mentioned Donald Trump. But I was like, wait, that's a thing? Like, he's running? Um, wow, Okay. And she just had all these arguments about how he's going to make America great again and all this stuff. And I was like, lady, you're getting trolled. Like, this has to be a joke. He's not really running. And I found out that he is running. So that's wonderful. Let's make it. Let's make an even bigger joke out of democracy. But there's no I mean, there's no way he's going to get the nomination. I'm sure they're going to give it to like Jeb Bush or Marco Rubio or somebody. I don't think he's really in it to get a nomination. I think he's really in it just to kind of put because he's he's the kind of person that he can go out and say whatever he wants and he could still be there the next day. He's not going to lose mm -hmm. any kind of uh, sponsorships or anything like that. I mean, the Cokes aren't even giving him money. So, I mean, he's paying for the, most of this out of his own pocket. So he could say whatever he wants, and he's not beholden to special interests or donors or anything like that, like the other candidates are. And he can say what he wants to say. And he's, he seems like he's got a couple of pet issues, and that one is immigration. Uh, the other one is outsourcing. <laughs> and then the other one is, you know, um, the chick at Fox News bleeds from her vagina. Like and he, So he can go out and say That's all right, of these yeah. things. And, he, you know, like tomorrow he's still in the race and he's still polling high. And people aren't really polling him 
I think there's a lot of people who want him as president, no doubt. But I think a lot of people are just saying that just to see like what he'll do next. And the only way they know they can keep him from do- keep him doing that is when the pollster asks and says, "Hey, yeah, Donald Trump all the way." <laughs> and I would too if the yeah. if the pollster called me. And I'm a registered Republican, uh, so like if I get that call, like I can I can actually answer it <laughs> legitimately. Like yes, I would say Donald Trump. You just to hear you crypto, <laughs> you crypto conservative no, son no, no. of a gun. You registered Republican. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, just so I, I can can't just so right I can participate in the primaries. And don't give me this like oh yeah. like you know like you're you're voting for the system. Like actually no, the primaries are actually private. <laughs> like they're actually like you're voting. Yeah. For the RNC, the RNC doesn't have to even take your vote. They just they just do. Uh, so you're basically just yeah. telling the RNC like this is how we want to vote, and that's basically it. But I, I I'm in favor of voting. I'm not part of that camp that thinks like voting is part of the system. Like, but no, then I they'll turn around. Completely. Yeah, but then they'll turn around and immediately like say like, hey, we should be, we should we should do jury nullification. It's like it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the exact <laughs> same thing. It just takes more time and it's more risky because you can actually go to jail because because if you go in there and say like if they're going to ask you what your political beliefs are and you're going to say like I'm an anarchist they're going to say get out of here but you have to you have to lie in order to get on to the next round so you can actually risk you know going to jail perjury uh for for doing jury nullification as an anarchist but all you have to do to get out of jury duty is just say like, oh yeah I'm an anarchist I don't see this court as legitimate you're being honest next <laughs> that's what yeah. I do every time well, I get this jury duty. Well, it bothers me because everyone talks about how voting is pointless, and I get in many circumstances it seems that way because it kind of can be, but that's why I tend to vote on issues more than for candidates. Whenever I have an opportunity to vote on a particular issue in my county, um, I just vote no on it. Vote, just go in there, vote no on everything, and I'm out. Um, and I, I don't see that as playing into the system or anything because I'm, I'm just telling them no. And like, look, if the system doesn't work, and my vote doesn't actually mean anything, then like, what am I losing? You yeah. know what I mean? It, it, like maybe 20 minutes of my day to go out and do something that I was gonna spend like watching Stefan Molyneux videos. What, I, I don't I don't have 25 cents to donate for, for two hours worth of videos. I'm going out to vote, man. Yeah. Besides, but an employer can't stop you from going out and voting or you're going to school, so you can do that. And <laughs> be like, I don't wanna go to class today. I gotta vote. Screw you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, screw you guys. I'm going to vote. My vote makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of person. I'm not. I don't put voting up on this pedestal like it's our most important oh, yeah. duty as a society. No, 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 but no. am I gonna? Am I gonna throw it away? No. Of course, I'm gonna vote if I have the opportunity. There's just certain people. I just want. I, there's certain people I won't choose between though. Like if I see Trump versus Hillary Clinton on the ballot, like I'm not gonna vote for either of them. But if I'm in the voting booth and the question is like. Should we raise the minimum wage, or should, you know, when they let you vote on issues, then I'll then I'll give the state my input. Yeah. But and last time I was even arguing like, oh, I'm gonna go vote, I'm gonna go vote, like, and every, and I, you know, of course it was starting a conversation, but people were angry, like, how dare you? You're not a real anarchist. No, no, they weren't that that impolite. I mean, they they just wanted to debate with me. But anyways, uh, <laughs> like, but even still, at the end of the day, I was like, eh, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna bother. And the reason why I didn't bother is because I was looking at the um, I was looking at the exit polls and pretty much everything that I wanted. Uh, was either getting passed and a few th- and a few things were like overwhelmingly getting rejected and there was like my vote yeah. actually would not matter so it was like what's the point like I'm getting what I want mostly I'm getting what I want so a lot of those ballot in- initiatives yeah. failed that I wanted to fail and, and you know so I was happy and also the judges this point the made judges are the else. most important thing because you, if you know, the judges can actually do some real damage and no one votes for the judges people just skip that part. You know, they win by a few votes. So you can actually make a difference with, you know, with a family court, you know, and get someone in there that's not just going to automatically side with a woman every single time. But, mm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I actually heard this said somewhere else, but all the people who claim that voting is pointless and doesn't make a difference would be freaking out if they ever took away our right to vote. Yeah. <laughs> they would be, what? Look at what this country's doing. We're all serfs here. This is why we need to stop being human cattle. I mean, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's... But I, I definitely get the mentality. I get why people are disgruntled with the state. I, I can't blame them. I'm disgruntled with the state, but that doesn't mean I, I'm never going to vote again. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm trying to... I um. I, I've really been checking my privilege down at art school, by the way. I'm one of the few uh, white, cis, straight males. And I'm Christian on top of it. So, like, I'm basically... I'm basically, like... 
the worst thing to happen to this campus. <laughs> I mean, I'm getting along with everybody, but that's because they don't really know my true form. Yeah, is it an eggplant? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that that's sounds right. really bad. Um, that sounds really bad, though. <laughs> yeah. The the, the eggplant is apparently yeah. <laughs> um, I saw something on my news feed, um, and I have to Google it now. But it was essentially about how the eggplant emoji is um, is sexual harassment towards women. No, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. Um, Vokovit.com is one. Vokovit is that how you pronounce it? Vok. Oh, I'm sorry. Vocative. Vo- vocative. Wow. Oh, it's like um, provocative. See? Yeah. Is this some subset of like Gawker Media? Because it doesn't seem that way. It, so Gawker has that kind of like format that's un, like it's very recognizable. Perhaps the most discussed character in the emoji library, the eggplant, has taken an aggressive turn. All right. First of all, I'm a millennial at an art school, which is supposed to be the most <laughs> stereotypically in touch with Apple products so type hipster. of person that would ever exist. And I have never heard of the eggplant emoji. I mean, I shouldn't say I've never heard of it, but I'm sure that I've it's seen the it. most discussed. Yeah, I've seen it, but it's the most discussed character. I didn't even know what it was until you told me it was sexual harassment today. So once just a succulent vegetable. I would then it's, debate that. I would really debate yeah, I don't that. Know who, that's pretty gross, actually. The notorious <laughs> on social media is a representation of male genitalia and widely used to denote sexual interest. It is now being used as a weapon against women on social media. Okay, so an emoji is a weapon now. I just want to let you all know, this isn't hyperbole. This is legitimate political rhetoric. An emoji is a weapon. Um, it seems silly to point at a, car- uh, a cartoon text speak as the beginning of a problem. Uh, that's because it is. <laughs> but the way we interact with- online has changed our language, and so our ability to consent to what is sent to us. Oh, bravo. So wait, are they uh, trying to say that, the, that it looks like a penis or something? I'm not sure. Like I thought, it was supposed to be like like originally when I saw the headline, I was like, okay, this is going to be about race, right? Because the eggplant is a you is a like a negative term, like the N word for black people, right? It's supposed to be. I mean, if you saw the jerk, you 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 remember that part where he was like, we're going to keep out all the eggplants, and they were like, oh yeah, keep I out all the vegetables. Like no, 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 no. It, we're talking about you know the N word, and he was like, "I'll oh, have you know I'm an N word." But oh, it's a great mo- it's a great movie. You have to go see the jerk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's supposed to be oh. like a a, a a euphemism for black. It's a negative connotation for blacks. That's what I originally oh, I thought this was. That. But apparently, the, I didn't know. Like, I didn't read the article. I just read the headline. <laughs> but, I, like how most people do. Um, but yeah. yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no. But no, I'm just going on. Um, this is Stefan, and I'm going to take apart this article <laughs> on Vocative.com. Um, so it's you don't very like the eggplant, that, uh, you can move. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like the eggplant, it's obviously because your attractive single mother never lets you eat proper fruits and vegetables because in the starvation gulag that is single mother homes uh we were not allowed to eat fresh vegetables anyway i'm sorry um so yeah this this last part which he says our ability to consent what is sent to us how do you consent to somebody saying something to you you don't know what they're gonna say ahead of time you're supposed to read their mind like no don't you say that out loud sir like consent to what is sent to us that's stupid now don't get me wrong if somebody like sends you unsolicited pictures of their genitals or something, I would agree that that's harassment. But this this idea of consenting to what's sent to us is, is kind of silly. And also, by the way, if somebody sends you unsolicited pictures um, of themselves nude, that's kind of just blackmail for you. I mean, I would, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, don't get me wrong. It's no. gross and like people should never do that. But it's not like you don't have the upper hand in that situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, continuing. Yeah, I mean, As I'm, digital I'm, language I'm, has I mean, evolved. Like, oh, I just don't want to interrupt. I, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure I interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I mean, like, uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I've, 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 I mean, I've had women ask me for dick pics. And I'm like, no, because I don't want you to have that stuff. So like later when you hate yeah. me, you're going to post it on the Internet and everyone knows what Jim Jesus's penis looks like. I mean, I'm not going to be embarrassed, but I mean, I just like, I just, I don't want people to know It's a sense of modesty. Yeah, exactly. That's not something I want everybody to see, but go, go on with the chlorophyll. Go on with the eggplant, sorry. (laughs) Go on with the baller feel. Um, The eggplant emoji. All right, so this is gonna this, this is getting better. As digital languages evolved and emojis have come to replace long form language in some online communities, subcultures have gravitated towards specific use cases and icons. A tiny library of cartoons spell out our wants and needs in an instant. 
on a medium where language comes across without context and emotion. Emojis have even become the root of arrests. And then there's a link that I'm not going to click. Arrests? Um, all right, I guess I will click it. It's that <laughs> winky face you type. You got clickbaited. That winky face... I did get clickbaited, and it's your fault. That winky face you type can and will be used against you in a court of law. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, I can't read this. Um, a few characters have inspired the spirited debate as the eggplant has. Has it inspired a spirited debate, or are you just making a stink out of nothing, literally? Um, with its bulbous tip and sleeker... Okay, so she's describing it. I'm not going to read out loud because I don't want to be profane, but yeah... This is a G-rated Honestly, podcast, had, mind you. <laughs> Be careful I how you describe that eggplant. Con- I didn't consent to having that said to me, so I don't know who she is to bombard me with something sick like that. I, and actually, I'm, to be honest, I would not have read that out loud if I knew what she was getting at. <laughs> That's kind of gross, but I totally did not consent to have that said to me. How dare she? Um, so, blah, blah, blah. The popular <laughs> hashtag eggplant Friday... Which Twitter's most sexually flirtatious community? The, oh, wow. Okay, I'm sorry. There's some descriptions here I can't read. It's um, not a G. You can do it if you want. I'm just like, it's it's so ridiculous, though. <laughs> it's just, there's a certain level of dignity I like to maintain, Jim. Okay, and like, okay, this is okay. just, this is beneath me. Uh, the symbol of the eggplant has become so widely accepted that on any given day, you will not find a single emoji within the eggplant Friday tagged vine clips of twit pics of, Wow! Okay, I'm not uh, something. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry if I'm skipping out on big parts of this article. There's just things I'm not comfortable saying out loud, which is weird considering it was typed by somebody who's offended by a picture of an eggplant. Um, <laughs> but this, you know, this isn't vi- even the this isn't even the first time I've heard about be- people like having this negative reaction to emojis. Like there was a uh, campaign, and it seems like it's dead because like if you saw the YouTube video for it, there was like mostly down thumbs, and everybody was just like, "This is the dumbest thing." Even people who are like, "I agree with this issue, but this is retarded." <laughs> like they wanted to have Apple and Android remove a gun emoji, and the reason why is because <laughs> because like people are so comfortable with this gun emoji that it's hurting the cause to stop uh, to for gun control, so that they're using it to. A, a step forward in order to push the you know the gun control issue because now people are not going to be comfortable with this emoji therefore they're going to be more comfortable uh, with gun control I didn't see a problem with the gun emoji because it's just a revolver now if it had a 35 round magazine clip oh, yeah. um, if it had a 35 caliber magazine clip then I would have problems with it but, but I don't but know I don't know this article- well has a revolver that's really scary that he has a revolver that is very scary it, it's, it's triggering make, my yeah. Cantwell <laughs> fear <laughs> literally triggered um so there's one last literally triggered there's one last there's one last um paragraph in this article uh eggplant friday is a gratuitous social media expression of open sexual exploration but using this emoji for harassment is the antithesis of all that yes eggplant friday photos are graphic and in your face examples of one public sexting but they are invited. Beyond that, community, when used to open conversations with an unknown internet user or a conversation with a context doesn't follow, it becomes harassment. Unrequested, sending an emoji, a sexual photo, a graphic gif, or charged image to a woman online is still symbolic of an act of degradation. Okay. And just like the case involving the use of a gun emoji that involved an arrest last year, as sexual harassment online moves further into the spotlight, we very well may see harassers going to court over unrequested acts of egg planting. Wow. So this is what really bothers me. And this is what really highlight this completely highlights the fact that these people in no way, shape or form ever question society's values, or at least where society's headed. Because instead of saying, wow, someone got sent to prison over an emoji. How insane is that? They wrote an article about how this, if someone was sent to jail over an emoji, Considering our court system is always right about everything all the time and must be infallible, they were clearly right about sending someone to jail over an emoji. So let's think of other emojis we can send people to prison for. <laughs> like th- this is the rationale. Well, this 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 is phallic, so obviously people need to go to jail for that. I mean, wow, I'm, we're gonna have to post a link to this article in our uh, description. Oh, yeah. be- but yeah, it's, it's God, it, everything's I mean, going in the show notes, by the way. Ah, uh, let's I, see. I, I, I just, think we should. I think we should start a campaign and find other emojis to get upset about. Because I'm. I found this list of different emojis, and um, 
Yeah, there's one with a devil, and that really is offensive. I mean, devil worshippers really offend me, and I think we should definitely take that yeah. one out. Um, oh, there's All an right. old lady, a stereotypical drawing of an old lady. That's not old ladies look like that. I mean, that's that's clearly uh, yeah, that's clearly racist somehow. It's <laughs> oh. very racist. You know what? I have to get out there. This is something I really need to say um, before we wrap up. But, all right, people constantly say, you know, as a white cis male, you don't know what it's like to be offended. You have no place to be talking about freedom of speech when you don't know what it's like that people say offensive things to you. No, listen, sir, I'm Catholic. Literally everything offends me. But you know what? I recognize that in this country we have a right to free speech. And, yeah, I get it that... Um, look, because I'm a libertarian, I'm more about forcing my beliefs onto others through the free market um, and shoving my beliefs down your throat that way. So watch out, folks, because once the Koch brothers deregulate all that, I'm going to be right at your front door with a Bible. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, look, I mean, I'm the kind of person who, yeah, like, I'm not trying to put myself above anyone or be up on a high horse because Lord knows I've done my fair share of negative things, but there's a kind of a moral code that I'm supposed to follow as a Christian, which granted, again, I don't always follow, but I don't freak out and get offended whenever I see somebody else behaving differently or knocking it. And it's like, I, so this idea that um, these people just feel completely entitled to silence anything that offends them is so mind-boggling to me because I feel like I grew up in a world where there was a lot of stuff that was offensive to me all around me all the time, but I was taught that it was really none of my business unless it directed me, unless it affected me directly. Mm -hmm. Like, it was not my position to use the state to force people. Because it's not like this person is saying, let's encourage others uh, to stop using this it was no people should start going to jail for this that's yeah, insane ridiculous. i could get behind it i could get behind it if she said let's be socially decent and not send this emoji ourselves i'd say okay i can see that i didn't even know it existed in the first place i have no issue with that but when she says people are going to jail over this and not mentioning that that's completely ridiculous yeah i'm gonna point out that it, yeah I mean, or, or even even better, like let's contact Apple and Google to redesign the emoji so it doesn't look like a penis anymore. Or mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't mean to offend yeah. you. <laughs> no, like a bulbous Jim, penis. Jim, I you need we need to censor you. Well, no, but it's this article goes very in depth, giving a sexually explicit description of an eggplant, and then claiming that we shouldn't give people unwelcomed sexual harassment, like. What? I'm going to sue whoever wrote this. I'm bringing this person to court. Yeah. Someone needs I did not to go to jail for this. Yeah. <laughs> someone needs to go to prison for this. Uh, uh, it's like the, the left becomes the right more and more every day. I mean, these people are so conservative. Yeah, and I, so we just, I just had a problem. But, and so. but it's also true in the reverse end, too. It's like I've, I've seen like MRA starting to act more like social justice warriors now. So, I mean, it's just like, just can we just calm down and stop being so offended by everything i mean the left is being yeah. offended by everything the right's being offended by everything it's just ridiculous absolutely it's and it's like it's because we're told that being offended is a virtue so to speak you know if, if you're the first person to get offended in an argument and then get up on your moral high horse and preach to somebody about why they shouldn't have said what they just said you're like a hero and a victim yeah, it's a and it's a survivor. The yeah, it's the it's the perfect weapon in an argument. You can just end any conversation. But just, ah, that's offensive. You know, it it's it kind of it's almost like you know like the against me argument. It's just like oh, you know, like you're just you just want me shot. Like how dare you? You know, that's basically yeah. just, You know, just say it to my face, motherfucker. It's basically just that. Um, anyway, so I guess we're gonna wrap things up. Unless you have anything else. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, that was basically it. I want to thank you for having me on again. I'm glad we got to have this discussion because, like I said, this new show, Gen Z, is going to be really important to social justice in our developing society, <laughs> society which is finally beginning to leave behind our old or uh, archaic ideas of, of objective morality uh, and notions of, of freedom of speech and expression and all that other gross stuff that hurts my feelings. <laughs> Wait a minute! Did you just say that there is a possibility? It's not a possibility. It's it's a fact. This this show will change people's mind. Are you even PC, bro? <laughs> you're right. You're right, bro. Bro, I need more PC, PC, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm so PC. I'm the most PC, bro, that ever PC. <laughs> oh man! All right.
So I guess we might as well wrap Beautiful it up. Beautiful folks. Yeah, so the music is by three link, uh, three chain links. I said it wrong the last time. Threechainlinks.com. Um, the show is covered by a BIPCOT no government license. Um, this allows reuse by anyone except governments. You can learn more at BIPCOT.org. You can check out uh, Seamus's cartoons, silly woman-hating cartoons at, uh, what is it? <laughs> Um, it is at youtube.com slash cartanimation, freedomtunes.com, facebook.com slash freedomtunes, and most importantly, as a capitalist, patreon.com slash freedomtunes. I will have you know, I am not above being a professional victim. My car- professional victim, my cartoons were doxxed uh, the other day by dirty MRAs who mm. are harassing me. So, mm-hmm, that's right. I'm going to need people to donate to my Patreon <laughs> immediately, immediately. <laughs> Yep, and uh, also we have. Um, by the way, we're also doing uh, every month. We're going to do a new flag, and for the new flag for September, uh, you can go check out at Flagatry. I believe it's the Las Vegas flag, and we're going to have one coming up soon because you know this is a short month. I didn't want to waste it all on something interesting, but uh, so you can go there, check it out, and then you can even have uh, have the flag made by sending this to BlackBlock.com. Uh, we're not sponsored by them, which is kind of neat, but you can have flags made. In the next the next month's flag is going to be awesome. I guarantee it. I'm actually going to have a real copy of it for you to see. So anyways, um, yeah, check. thank you, everyone. Lawbirds.com. Or, Thanks so or much. no, wrong show. <laughs> All right. What? <laughs> Take it easy. See you, later. See, see you later, you handsome audience members. Stay fresh. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.